pushing, roads open, let's go. I see it. Oh, quick catch. Got it. Oh, 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 oh. sure. You're good. You're good. All right, boys, let's get in the fight. Let's go. Let it, Let it go! Alright, fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. Hey, I'm making moves. Where is Abu Al Saeed? Oh. Where is Abu Al Saeed? I don't know! Where is Abu Al Saeed? I had the opportunity to attend Copperhead 8, hosted by American Milsim. It's a massive two-day airsoft event located in Playas, New Mexico, with hundreds of participants. This was the first American Milsim I've been a part of, and it's safe to say I learned a lot. Mostly how I'm about as useful as a concrete parachute on the radio, but other stuff too. My squad was stacked with the likes of Milspec Mojo, Administrative Results, and Drew Hopkins, just to name a few. I had a lot of questions before I went, and now that I've experienced it, many of those questions have been answered. So I wanted to share what it's like to participate, what to expect, and what to bring. Like that smash button and subscribe, and we'll get right into it. American Milsim is one of the largest airsoft organizations in the country. Its most notable comparison is Milsim West, which is similar in the sense of it being a massive faction war, but different in one key aspect. American Milsim had specific start and end times for both days, as well as a limited nighttime portion. This allowed players to jump in and out as time went on and meant people didn't need to ruck everything they needed for the entire weekend. I've never attended a Milsim West event. From what I hear though, it's a lot closer to the full military experience with MREs, taking contact all through the night, and sleeping on the AO. This event took place in Playas, New Mexico, which is an urban environment commonly used for military and law enforcement training. This meant you were likely either clearing structures or running into the open to another structure. So it'd be a good idea to get some grenades, like as many as you can possibly carry. But most of the time, you're walking with your dead rag on or posted up behind a wall trying to use Kentucky windage on man-shaped targets. At one point, we had been at a stalemate, holding off the cost forces for what seemed like hours. And after running dangerously low on ammo, I decided something had to be done. Standing just 50 yards away in the open field waved the enemy flag. I sat down my rifle, told my team to pray, and started to crawl. Using the desert shrubs as cover and inching forward little by little, I came across the proverbial Rubicon. Past this point, meaning I had no concealment, and if spotted, no return. But by the grace of God, the combatants in the building no more than 20 feet from me were distracted as I swapped their flag for ours. Surely I would be hit at any moment, but that moment never came as I rushed back to safety with six millimeter rounds flying overhead. Due to the nature of this job, no newspaper told this story, no award was given for bravery, and nobody really noticed at all. I'm not even sure what changing the flag accomplished or how it benefited us, but who cares? Ten points for Gryffindor. Where is he? Where's the hero? <laughs> He did it. Yeah. Jeremy did it, man. Now let's talk about gear and how I brought so much more than I needed. I had a battle belt from Sentry with a Safari Land holster, Sig Sauer air pistol provided by Sig Sauer, which was absolutely phenomenal, and an HSGI double mag pouch. After the first break, I ditched the whole thing to shed weight and gave my hip flexors a break. Then I had a plate carrier from Prime Armor with their placard and the pack on the backside. It did a great job and I don't really have much negative to say considering it's my first plate carrier. I learned a lot about kit and what needs to go where to make everything work under pressure. I probably reorganized this sucker 10 different times before it was ready and even then I still had some issues with wire management. But those are problems you don't really know you have till you get out there and run around in your kit. I had an OpsCore bump helmet with ear more ear pro that plugged into my Beofang radio, which was uh, absolutely phenomenal. For the price I paid, it doesn't really get much better than that. This rifle is an Oveski NSR9. I'm really not even sure what it's called. Evike sent it to me, and I'm very thankful for that. Big thank you to those guys. They absolutely hooked it up, and I guess it's Evik too. Uh, I'm just gonna stick with Evike though. So thanks, guys. 
It ran very well and Gun Mag outfitted the rifle with a Holosun AEMS red dot sight, blue force gear sling, Magpul grip, and a Surefire Vampire Scout light. Now, if someone had ordered a truckload of dumbasses and I was the only one to show up, they'd have gotten their money's worth because who uses an IR capable light and doesn't run night vision? This genius right here. Gun Mag also provided the Sentry Gunner Belt that I showed you earlier, the G-Shock watch, and the Mechanics Gloves. AGM provided the thermal optic, and it did see some use in the night vision portion, but the biggest issue with fighting at night is positive identification. I might be able to see someone, but getting a PID on a friend or foe was a challenge. So also, if you're gonna do the night fighting, you basically need knots. I mean, yes, you can use a white light, but you're probably gonna be dead before you even turn it on. Ask me how I know. Having said all that, you really only need a few things. Appropriate colors, a gun, a couple mags, and maybe a backpack. The colors need to either be green or tan, depending on your faction, and each faction has a lot of options for approved camo patterns. The backpack would have extra batteries, BBs, water, chapstick, pain relief, all that kind of basic stuff. I'd also recommend some sort of compass because I didn't have one and when people would hit the radio saying, hey, we're moving north, I couldn't tell where that was. It was a great opportunity to test gear and test yourself on a non-static range. A lot of people in my squad were running armor just to get more experience with the weight. So it's good to get more time with your kit. So if it's a big reason why you wanna play, go for it. But personally, I would opt for a chest rig next time and put much more thought into being as light as possible. It may not be what I'd pick for a real like force on force scenario, but it'd make the game a lot more enjoyable. I had an absolute blast and I know you will too. My squad was made up of good friends, new friends, and of course, Jimmy's mom. If you wanna see more footage of the night vision portion, check out Mojo's video in the description below. Like, subscribe, thanks for watching. Thanks for shopping with Gun Mag Warehouse. Stay free.